right, we're back with Tip of the Hirschberg, one of my oldest friends. I think you're, what, 39, 40? Yeah, um, and uh, Jordan Jensen here on the pod. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for having me. You, you know, know if you want it closer to you. You can hold it in your lap. This is what I hate about podcasts. They don't allow for the lean. Are you big? Are you big timing me? Like I don't want to talk into the microphone. Is this a big time move? No, I want to lean back. <laughs> You're like five, ten minutes late, it. and then you got to be like, Ugh, I got to talk I, into I the microphone. In here and you were still talking about musical gayetry <laughs> with gay boy McDougal. Um, Jordan used to be my opener. That was her uh, main credit for a while. Um, that was yeah. I, opened for <laughs> I did open for you quite a bit. I opened for you. I opened for Ian. That's right. That's right. Open for Louis. Look at him now. <laughs> um, I haven't seen you in a while. It's good to see you. You said you look. You said you felt like you look like a corpse. I don't think you look like. I'm a dead. Corpse. I'm dying. I'm dying. No. Every other day, I'm dying. I no. get off the road and I die. I think it's long haul COVID. But dude, I ran. Everyone into plays everything on long haul COVID. My career isn't going well. Long haul COVID. My. <laughs> I, it's just everything, you know. What I, I mean? thought my smell was still fucked up yesterday, and I was like, "Something smells really bad." And Ethan was like, "It might be me," and I was like, "It's not." And then I smelled him, and I was like, "It's one hundred percent you. You smell terrible." Well, why would that be long COVID? If you smell something, that's means I you have, have long COVID. But if you I, smell something, it means you you, you yeah, don't. Yeah, remember have. when I couldn't smell anything but the smell of pussy oh, right, for right, like right, right, six right. months? Yeah, but rank pussy. Uh, oh right, everything smelled bad. That was your thing. Yeah, everything it, smelled like rank pussy. Yeah. And then it started. Well, you shouldn't back. hang out with yourself then. You I know. know. <laughs> I couldn't get away. I am attached to this bitch. <laughs> um, but but then Ian also smelled like rank pussy. That was Ethan. Ethan. Ethan? No, Ian smells amazing. Ian smells like a mixture of cigarettes and kind of cheap cologne, which yeah. is what my father smells like. They're just <laughs> You're so you fucked. Yeah, You're so totally. fucked. I'm That's for your I just saw to. like a trash man downstairs. It was like addicted to meth. Got wet. And because yeah, totally. Because he had like a work jacket on i was like what's up with this guy yeah it sucks if you have a shitty father because i guess it's like you hate him but then you still want to fuck him uh i believe that's what freud said and now you like want to fuck like you're like you get turned on by the douche huh i have a new joke about this where i'm yeah. like what do rich people want to fuck caribbean nannies oh that's funny yeah thanks. that's good mm -hmm. um don't test out material on my i only fuck assholes <laughs> and i only fuck and I always want to fuck people who have like a blue collar vibe to them. Right, that's your thing. You gotta fuck like a real man. Yeah, what? what yeah. Have I've you ever fucked the, like a pussy? Like me? Someone like me? Let me think. Yeah, totally. Musician, sad, sad Zach. No oh, musician. Yeah, like not good with their hands. But I feel feel like a musician's still good with their like. Like I don't know how to build anything or anything. I feel like you need someone. You need someone to know what like the difference is between a Phillips head, or a, I can't even list the other. Thing. What's the other thing? Flat. Flat? Yeah. Like if someone doesn't know, like you're probably so dry right now. Like if someone doesn't. <laughs> Anytime around you, it's like Dune. It's like Dune 3. Dude 3? Yeah. Is there a Dune 3? No, but that's my <laughs> that's vagina <laughs> coming soon this fall. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, so yeah, so you like, you need someone to know the difference, right? Totally. Yeah. It's very unattractive if they don't. The incapable. I mean, it's it is like the there is a, a, a I actually do use you as an example when I describe oh, this. Interesting. Where it's like you're so neurotic that mm -hmm. you have no hand eye coordination. None. Like the time my we were in my truck and my cup holder came off the door and it's like obviously a hook goes into the door and you literally were taking the cup holder and just touching it. <laughs> against the door like as if monkey. it was yes, exactly like a monkey as if somehow it was magically gonna do it it was cr and i was i remember driving just being like this is unreal i've tried to explain this like i am smart in some ways you're and very they, smart. and some people are like you're, you're, you're so way smart, smarter but, than me but i'm like very retarded in other ways you just don't have a connection to the physical world world yeah, yeah. like i like you know like i have like read like ulysses multiple times and understand it pretty well. And I also, I think two weeks ago, I spilled coffee on my balls two different times. Yeah. Two different times <laughs> in a week. Day? In a week. Wow. No, not that dumb. But in a week, yeah. I spilled coffee on my balls in two different scenarios. Yeah, I mean, you're not, yeah, the way you eat food. I mean, it's really unreal. You don't like how you feel. This has been a big thing in our relationship. You know, It's really, it's highly problematic. One time I did a... a they had a roast of me before I left Louisville to New York, and a friend said, "If you've ever, if you don't know what it's like for Ron to eat a salad, just imagine putting a bunch of vegetables in a blender, keeping the top off, and pressing the button." Yeah, yes. <laughs> and that stuck with me more than anything. That's exactly you. You, you really criticized me a lot. No one else does, even my girlfriend. But that's you, insane. 
That's insane. She's doing you a disservice. Yeah, I eat. What's the deal? I eat with my mouth open. You take a bite and then you decide to talk to everybody. In the <laughs> well, right got- after you take the bite, <laughs> and you can't wait for yourself to chew. So you're just like, fuck it. I'll just whatever comes out comes out. <laughs> so long as these people are hearing my the words, the gospel that I have to tell them. It's right like now. it's like my two biggest vices are eating and talking, and I can't let one stop the other. Right. You know what I mean? I have to like. I'm, I I love talking too much to stop to eat. Yeah. And I love eating too much to let talking interrupt it. Right. You're you know so I mean? excited to do both. <laughs> yeah, that I, I yeah, have you to can't choose. <laughs> it's great. And I, you get this, you know, I always want to be like, I'll wait for you to finish chewing for you to say your point. But that even if you do the cover them out, but you can't. Yeah. But it's not just that. It's also like, a, I can't believe Caitlin lets you drive her car. Yeah, I know, I know. That's Our crazy. friend lets me drive the car. And every time I'm driving, I'm like, she should not be letting me do this. The other I'm day like we were like- almost running over kids and like just like have the, you know, the blinker on for like 22 miles. Yeah, <laughs> at the cellar when they I were like- I get to Toledo and I'm like, oh, that parking brake, was that on the whole time? Yeah, <laughs> she was like, we were at the cellar the other night, all of us, and you were like, they were like drunk. They had, yeah. had a couple of drinks. And they're like, oh, you'll drive us home because you're sober. <laughs> and you're like, I can't do that. And they were like, we let you use the car all the time. Yeah, but you I was like, yeah, but you're not around. But you don't want to see what I'm doing. You don't want to see. Did I ever tell you the the break story with me? Oh yeah, the what classic happened? story, classic story. Okay, you know the story. Tell me, I forget, but uh, I remember so here we go, it. classic uh, Ron on story. Uh, it was a college or after college. I had a car. I bought my first car. It was a piece of shit, fucking car. Had what? all these problems. Honda Civic. It was like a Ford. It was something bad, and. Uh, and the brakes start acting up. And then my mechanic said, I need to fix the brakes. And I didn't. I didn't listen to him. I was like, I'll deal with this later. <laughs> Which is the worst thing to deal with later. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm driving one day with my brother-in-law, Jeff Bacon, who is very afraid of driving. This was this became a real immersion therapy for him because he's like afraid of driving. He was in the other seat. I'm driving. I'm on like a suburban street. The car in front of me stops. I put my foot on the brakes and my car just keeps on going. Oh. And I'm like, yeah. And the car's just going right towards. Have you not heard the story? It goes right towards the the the, uh, the car in front of me. So I swerve. There's like, oh my a, god, you drove into somebody's deck. I, yeah, yeah. Who's fucking spoiling it? This, sorry, uh, yeah, sorry, I sorry. swerve. There's like a kid on a bike. I like swerve to not. I almost killed a kid on a bike. I swerved it, uh, away from him. Go up a driveway. There's like a nice car in the driveway. I'm like, I can't hit this. And it's like literally naked gun. I swerve into someone's backyard. And I go up the patio and hit the wall and I stand up and my car is on someone's back deck. It's literally like like naked gun, you know, in the opening. And I now have to go to the front of the house, knock on the door and tell the person inside that my car is on their deck. Holy shit. So I, uh, I, I knock on the door. This old lady comes out, very old. So old, she didn't hear me. <laughs> drive my car on the deck and we call the police and this is totally true this is gonna sound like a joke but this is totally true the police came it was one police guy uh and he looked at me and looked at her looked at the car on the deck and then he turned to her and he goes so what did you do wow (laughs) wow i was like i know women drivers right they're the worst (laughs) that's amazing i will say i think it's impressive that you dodged all those People and things. I know it was actually the best driving I've ever done in my life. Yeah. That was a thing. I was like, I was like fucking uh, uh, Keanu Reeves from Speed. I was like fucking driving without brakes. You know, like it was like incredible. Yeah, that was that was actually wow. my best driving. That's very impressive. You didn't hurt anybody. But my uh, brother in law was terrified of driving. It did not help him deal with. I thought it'd be like emergency therapy, but he just he was freaking out the whole time. He became more afraid. It, would yeah. you believe he became more afraid of driving? I had to that. jump into my truck once when it was moving towards traffic. I left the, I didn't put it in park. It was oh, a wow. neutral. And it was just driving towards the middle of an intersection. Wow. And I had to run after it. Yeah. And leap into my moving truck. That's like a naked gun it. moment too. Yeah. Like when his car like drives away. I haven't seen that movie. Anyone, it. You've never seen naked gun? No. Anyone get a license on that car? And then he like slowly realizes it's his. It's like, oh, <laughs> wow. Naked, you've never seen naked gun? I should gun? watch it. What are you? Like, how are you Sounds into like comedy? My name. Naked gun is like the funniest. I don't watch comedies. Oh, suck. Uh, I watch Martin Scorsese and. That's about it. That's about it. Yeah, you're well, real no, man's. Uh, I've been watching. I watched a uh, Snowpiercer two nights ago. An incredible film. Just amazing. Not crazy film. about it, but um, it. not one of his best. Minor. Uh, Parasite. Yeah, Parasite's great. Yeah. What's another one he made? He did Mother. He did Memory of a uh, uh, Killing. He did um, The Host, which is great. Um, but uh, but he, we're here t- t- today to talk about uh, Prozac. Because 
we had a long car ride once where we had a long conversation about Prozac. Yes. And it was a big deal for me. Why? Well, that was when I was getting advice from you before I realized you were a borderline insane person. Yeah. So I took a lot of advice from I you. I am insane. <laughs> yeah, I'm realizing I, know, I am I know, like, I know. I am the bi bipolar thing was not a misdiagnosis. The, the road, the depression on the road versus the mania in New York is such whiplash that it's yeah. like. Yeah. No, you are crazy. It's it's like, and I took advice from you for years. So it's I, I'm it's good like, with advice. I'm good it's with like advice. finding out your therapist is Hannibal Lecter. You should Lecter. see how crazy it's I like am without this. <laughs> without the medication, I'm fucking nuts, dude. I just realized real quickly, though, like Hannibal Lecter, he was a therapist. Yeah. So once he got arrested for eating people, all his patients were like, shit. I, I do. I got married because of his advice. <laughs> yeah. I would be way more crazy, though. I have feel like you should have run with that bit. It was a pretty good bit. Hannibal Lecter bit? <laughs> yeah, the idea of his patients being like, eh, good. He's not living. The idea of his patients, like after he gets arrested for uh, eating people, they're like, shit. I took his advice for years. That's pretty funny, you know? All right, anyway, go on. <laughs> I feel like it, it's a frequent happening. What do you mean? Where you, I mean, it's like, you know. Well, the worst is if your therapist commits suicide. I oh think if your God. therapist commits suicide, you have to commit suicide, right? Like, that's part of it. <laughs> you have to go down with the ship. You can't be like, well, he, I'm alive because of him. <laughs> that's how I felt about Robin Williams. I was very much like, I, I understand this level of crazy, this like bipolar right. disorder. And then when he killed himself, I was like, fuck. I should do it. Level of ego on you. I you're know, like, I Robin Williams know. killed himself. Huh? Well, you know when you're a kid, you Just identify like with actors. You know what I mean? Where you're like, at least they're crazy and they're allowed to be crazy. You know what I mean? And then he hung himself and I was like, fuck, yep, I know it's going to happen. That's how I felt when Kobe Bryant died. I'm like, yeah, I guess I have to I die know. too now. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we were on the car. We were dri cursed with huge hogs. <laughs> yeah, we were driving. Did he have a big dick? I don't know. We were driving. Uh, Just racism. Uh, we were driving to some fucking gig. I know where we're driving, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, that gig and that. Where uh, I watched you eat porridge for the first time and really had my mind blown. <laughs> I'll never forget you eating that Porridge is bad? Porridge. Is that bad for- It was just the loudest. I mean, it was unbelievable. Is there worse, for my type of eating, is there worse foods for that? or is Some, Whatever bad? through a straw is ideal. <laughs> Nothing that requires So the utensils. only way you want to be grossed out with me is if I was like in a hospital bed and they were feeding me from a tube. Yeah. What if even then I was like- Even spinning. you drinking water gets messy. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> it's true. It's, it's true. <laughs> and I'm kind of a messy person, but you really take the cake. Dude, the other day, like, at, who was it who showed up? Well, oh, yeah, sorry. Resign? I forget who what. I, oh, Ashton Womack showed up at, at the riot in Houston last weekend. And he was so clean and crisp, like all his clothes. And I yeah. just had shit all <laughs> over me. It's so gross. We got to get our act together. Well, I, it's bad with my girlfriend now because like sometimes we're walking around and she'll be like, she'll look see things hoodie. on like my hoodie that look like cum stains. The hoodie you're wearing right now. But, when was I But whenever you see hoodie? cum stains on me, I just say, no, it wasn't cum stains because it could be a, other stuff. But my girlfriend knows it's a cum stain because she remembers the cum hitting the shirt. Gross. So she's like, you got to clean off that cum stain. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, it's not a cum stain. Like, yeah. I caused it. Yeah. That's my work. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Like, that's my Jackson Pollock. <laughs> yeah, that's my painting. You gotta I, you, a, a Women watched me on the train pour coffee onto my boot <laughs> to rub off some like wet cheese goo or something <laughs> that was on it. No, I'm trying to have only one sweatshirt to get cum on. Is the it problem that is, one? Is, I'm is it that one that's covered in cum? <laughs> no, it's not covered in cum. <laughs> the problem with, problem with me is I have to wear black to look like, you know, uh, Okay, thinner. you can't wear white. What would that do? Everything else besides cum would show up. But cum stains are the worst for black. Stop coming in shirts. <laughs> Take your clothes off when you come. Yikes. <laughs> Me naked is much more disgusting. I mean, I get it, but. By the way, we're not here to talk about cum on my shirt. We're talking we're about Prozac. Talk Prozac. I'm currently on Prozac. You know yes. I go on and off of it. You've gone off on a, on and off on it for years. For years. Um, and you, are you like, I'm one of those people when I take a medication, I just take it. Like all, I don't get like you'll just you'll be like ah, I got to take I more today. I gain weight on Prozac, and it so do I. Everything. I'm fat fuck now. It's very annoying though, so I'll get off of it to lose weight. I know it's it's so tough. It's really fucked up. Yeah, the I know. munchies are insane. I know. Well, so when I saw you, I I got off Paxil. I had been on Paxil for 15 years, and I was having a lot of awful uh, symptoms. And I got off, and you would tell me to go on Prozac. You know, you said Prozac was you know great for you. you didn't yes. tell me the weight gain part. Yeah. But you told me to go on Prozac, yeah. and now I'm on fucking Prozac. 
kind of because of your fucking recommendation. It's the best. Yeah. So you're like my fucking therapist. And then I see you just being an insane relationships where you have no self-awareness or, or like ability to like function. And I'm you like, can't what are take I doing? Away, you can't, you can't remove my trauma growing up, but you can make it so I can function and I right. can function in the world. So you're on Prozac now. We're both on Prozac. I'm on Prozac now. I'm on Prozac. I'm on uh, 40 milligrams. What are you on? 20. Yeah, but you th you need it more than me. I feel like you should be on more. I don't have... You have meltdowns. You have panic <laughs> attacks and depression yeah. sessions. Yeah, I, gotta, I get panic attacks. I just get... Yeah, I get the... I'm also... I run six miles every other day. Like, uh -huh. I deal with my serotonin. Right, right, right. Although I do sleep till 4 p.m. Yeah, I get... Yeah, no, I do get... You don't get panic attacks. I actually do sometimes with because of Prozac. Well, what's your issue? Depression? Uh, I feel like you have everything, right? Yeah, I have you have, you have you're bipolar, borderline, I'm sociopath not borderline. is. You have to stop saying to people that I'm borderline. <laughs> you have to stop. I'm not telling people I'm borderline. You every well, time I, I see you, you're like you're borderline. <laughs> I am not borderline. You're not. I thought no. I thought you borderline. I told you a thousand times. I'm gonna say this is the last time I'm gonna say it, and the next time that I, I'm gonna tell everybody that you have herpes. That's what's gonna happen. I don't have herpes. You do have herpes. I fuck someone with herpes. You do I don't have, have herpes. herpes. You do. I'm a hero. See how it feels. Someone who See how it feels when somebody takes something you said that's kind of related to the thing, and then they you change it. You are closer it? to borderline than I am to her herpes. Bullshit! <laughs> You're about to get herpes, and I don't have borderline. I have attachment style issues uh -huh. that are borderline tendency like. Oh, you have borderline tendencies. You got the tendencies. The only tendency I have is I can't get out of relationships. Okay. What is, I don't even really know what borderline is. Borderline I, is like bitches who call and they're like, I'm going to kill myself if you don't pick up. It's kind of a new way of saying that bitch is crazy. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's 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 not so sad. And it's like, I would be texting you in the middle of the night and being like, I don't know why you said that on my podcast. Da, 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 da. We, we, right, you know what right, I mean? Right, Those right. middle of the night scary texts. Well, with you, I feel like. I have PTSD from childhood trauma. Right, right, right. And that's it. I had I was raised terribly. Yes. If for people who don't know, she was raised by lesbian parents. Wolves. It caused a lot of trauma. No, my lesbian moms <laughs> are fine. Two out of three. Being of raised without a father figure created a lot of No, my dad was the problem. <laughs> I was raised shittily and I had crippling O C D my entire life. And we both were uh I was gonna say Very raised fat. fat. <laughs> we both were raised like a religion. We yeah. both were raised in the yeah, fat. We were religion. raised fat. I actually, let me tell you about this. I, uh, um, yesterday I was eating ice cream and she's, uh, my girlfriend said I was eating too, or she tried to tell me to like eat less, but she was being helpful because I tell her I have portion control, but I ended up having a panic attack later. And I think it was like bringing up trauma from when I was younger. Why'd you have a panic attack? I think it brought up trauma. When you say panic attack, when I have a panic attack, it's like I'm wrecked for days. It like ricochets into the rest of my. Panic like, attack, your... no, I, like I had trouble breathing for like an hour. I've had all types of panic attacks. Well, you had trouble breathing. Like, what happens? I've had screaming fits. I've had trouble breathing. I've had dizziness, lightheadedness. I don't know. I have all different kinds. I get the, like, racing. Like, sometimes on air. Racing heart? Yeah. We're yeah, it's the same thing. Racing heart, shortness of breath. Okay. It's fun, because it's all, like, it's fun. symptoms of anxiety are also symptoms of, like, any fatal. <laughs> but what is the panic about? My panic is always, like... Mine's a lot of times somatic now. It's not like I don't even know. It's just like a body thing. I don't yeah. even know. There's no like thought behind it, you know? But then I wonder if it's because she said that. I don't know. You know? Well, you do have bad portion control. Remember I, when we went to Vegas and we went to Whole Foods? Right now. Do I have bad portion control? Ah. Yeah, totally. All of us do. Every comic has bad portion control. Yeah, I know. Every time David Tell brings those bags of candy in, it's the bane <laughs> of my existence. It's um, crazy. We all are terrible at it. But so that's why we can't drink. You're on Prozac now. You're on twenty milligrams. Yeah. And when'd you get on? The last yeah. Every you time you treat Prozac like a boyfriend. It's just on and off for like years. <laughs> yes. Every time I get dumped, I jump right back into it. It, it is. It is very good for me. Like, do you I get off say. Prozac when you're in a relationship? No, I get on it in a relationship. I'm fine if I'm not in a relationship. If if no dude is fucking with me, I don't need Prozac. But when I'm getting, when my, I'm being triggered, you know, my attachment style is being triggered, aka right. when somebody's, I date assholes. Right. And when they start acting like an asshole, I start getting freaked out. And if I take Prozac, I'm able to be like, you're just dating an asshole. Get out of this. Right. Because you're, you're basically reliving the trauma of an asshole dad abandoning you, right? Of both my, both my parents just were very poor and needed to make so money. I get some 
views on this. I can't. I don't cry. <laughs> Have you met me? No, both my parents were just busy. They were just busy. They were busy, and they left me at home with my sister, who was very abusive. She was, yeah, she but was, she didn't know what she was doing. Right, right, right. And then abusive physically, not sexually. Jesus Christ. And she was very. So I just and nobody that you know of. I always wonder. You know, you never know if you're molested. I was wondering, like, what if I was molested? I just don't know it. You know. I think you do know because when you're a kid, you're hyper aware of sexual stuff. You know what I mean? So you ever wonder, though, was I raped? And I don't remember. I have to go into hypnotism and then you get into hypnotism. And then you're like, I'm, I was tied up in a bed and there was 12 people jacking off. on me. <laughs> I did hypnotism and they brought me back to my childhood and I quit immediately. Really? Yeah. yeah I was like, fuck you. I do not ever <laughs> want to do that again. That's horrible. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, it's bad. It's bad. Why would you want to do that? I'm like, there's a long term, long term memory. Well, is- therapy's always like you got to confront shit. I'm like, confronting shit could be bad. Yeah, I just like to move forward. I have a therapist who's like, I tell her I'm anxious about something. She tells me I'm more anxious about. A therapist? I thought you were with Alan now. Yeah, a therapist before that. Oh, okay. She used to say the reason I'm actually anxious and it would be way worse. I'd be like, I'm nervous when I'm late for flights. And she's like, you're actually anxious about dying without anyone loving you. And I'm like, I'd rather be anxious about the flight. Yeah. You know? Totally. Sometimes you, you need the distraction. You I know. know my I mean? therapist always wanted to talk shit on my family. And I'm like, I'm not going to dredge up. I'm not going to make them bad. Everybody's doing the best they can. How do I deal with today I know. being all right? Sometimes anxiety is like a necessary distraction. Like my girlfriend just had open heart surgery. She's doing well. Yeah. But before the open heart surgery, surgery she was really worried about having a scar and looking bad. And I kind of wanted to be like, I can't be like, no, what you're really worried about is not making it through surgery. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, you know. <laughs> totally. You're worried about dying, yeah. but that's a good place to put it. Yeah, yeah, totally. So sometimes I guess anxiety is, you know, you know. A she's thing. a therapist. She is, yeah. So she, yeah, you should listen to her if she does. I know, but let me tell you, she's a good therapist, but I see her like issues and I realize therapists, they're all fucking, they don't follow their own fucking rules. It's all the same. It's very true. It's all like obsessive thoughts and all that shit. You're like, ah. And she's like giving advice. If if you knew what your therapist, the problems in their life, you would would quit immediately. Every therapist has their, like the exact issues that they're not following, you know? So maybe you, just to tie back, maybe you are a good therapist. I would be a great therapist. I went to grad school for you. Yeah, yeah. And I I did feel like you helped me with therapy. And the, but then as I got to know you more. Who would be is, a better therapist? A crazy person or somebody who's been normal forever? The normal person doesn't point. know shit. Has Have you talked point? to a normal person before about problems? It's disgusting. They're just like, that sounds really dark. Yeah, they're just like, why don't you try? You know what? You need alone time. And I'm like, when I do alone time, baby girl, it is like, wow. And my yeah. thoughts dominate yeah, my entire the life. The I need music playing all the time. Yeah. I will shoot up that building. <laughs> yeah, totally. A hundred percent. Like You need self-care. I'm like, no, I don't need to be as far away from myself as possible. <laughs> it's this true. Is crazy. You gotta be alone with your thoughts. Like, I will start screaming. I'm yeah. I'm void of life. No, it's crazy. I need, yeah, I need, yeah, we need the distractions. We need to think about the scar and not yes. the surgery. Totally. You know? I'm glad the surgery went well. It did well. It did go well. Yeah. But Prozac is fuck. I mean, it's crazy how much it works. It's immediate for me too. It's a, no, it's not. That's psychological. It it for people with PMDD, it actually does kick in. Right. PMD, away. which is which one is that? Pre, I'm border, not gonna, I, border I actually line. don't feel safe talking about it with you. Well, I, I'm not gonna say because you're a latent misogynist. I'm not a latent. Yes, misogynist. you are. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. I'd rather you say I have herpes than be a latent misogynist. You are. You I'm have a little a late, bit of. I'm a, you I'm have a little bit of feminist. It. What is it? Post menstrual development. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Post post menstrual Down syndrome disorder. You have a retarded period. <laughs> is your period Wait, retarded? Wait, what is it actually? <laughs> premenstrual dysphoric disorder. It's where you just get suicidal before your period. Truly suicidal. Okay. Why? Why would I? What do you think? I you because you can't ever not make a period joke or something like, oh, you're a lady. The <laughs> I don't have borderline. All right. 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 But you have pre period suicidal issues. Premenstrual dysphoric disorder. It's just where you, it's like everything is basically linked around your period. All your depression, all your. I mean, I think it's awful to be a woman. It sucks. It's like fucking. It's 100%. It's the worst a, thing. like, because I get depressed all the time. But then imagine you get depressed in life and then also every time you get your period. You know? I don't mind the period because it's actually like, that's why I got the IUD out because the blood mm. was kind of like a. A relieving like yes at least there is carnage from this pain right 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 you know but it's like when you're on the road you're waiting in traffic and, and there's like maybe an accident you're like you better see a fucking, yeah yeah you better exactly. see a head rolling down the street for this to be worth it <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. you drive in traffic and you finally get to the and it's like barely an accident you're like fuck that yeah, shit yeah i want to see a kid on fire <laughs> for me to be late for my fucking <laughs> for my fucking uh, barber appointment yeah, yeah. totally yeah that's 
how I feel. If I'm going to have that much pain, I want there to be a miscarried child. So every month you're like, I should kill myself. And then you bleed. And then you're. It's <laughs> bad. I mean. <laughs> and every month you feel like you're going to kill yourself. And they're like, oh, your relief is literally blood coming out of your vagina. Yeah, totally. That's terrible. Oh, it's the worst. And the su- I mean, the like the depression and the, the bloating and the rage. I mean, it's all. It's crazy, and it builds up, and it builds up, and it builds up, and then you. And your default mode's not that stable either, so it's like no, and that (laughs) you have like two good days a month. (laughs) Truly, if that, if I don't, yeah, fuck those up. I like sleeping till five p.m. Yeah. No, and, and, and uh, people say like Judaism is sexist because Orthodox Jews have this prayer. It's actually hilarious. They have a prayer every morning where they go, thank you, God, for not making me a woman. Yeah. But honestly, rules. I feel like that prayer really comes from a level of. Uh, Do they really say that? Yeah, it's hilarious. Orthodox Jews. It's like every morning they wake up and they're like, thank you, God. And then they go, thank you, God, for not making me a woman. <laughs> but I honestly, agree with it's this. accurate. It's like, yeah, it sucks, you know. It's There's like nothing. Louis, yeah, Louis bit bad about it better to be white. It's not being white isn't better, but it's better to be white. You know what I mean? It's 100%. like hundred percent. It's like not yes. because of society. I'm so relieved I'm not a woman. Yeah, it is awful. not worth it. You get it's a couple not. free drinks, and the one thing that makes it worth it, which is having the child, I don't want to have. That's so like the worst waste. part about it. No, 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 no. <laughs> but uh, they have the connection with the child that right, the right, dad right. doesn't have. But yeah, I mean, what is, the, is like you? What is the benefit yeah. about of being a woman? I don't even know. I mean, I guess you like. I'm smarter than you inherently. Uh huh. Like I'm gonna. If somebody walked into the room and I need, and one of us need to ingratiate ourselves to them, it would be me. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know if that's just you being a woman. You're just like a, a personable person. Yeah. <laughs> Autistic women. What are you gonna do? Yeah. Exactly. Like wipe them yeah, off the planet. Fucking, what are they doing? Yeah. Here? You think? Yeah. That's, that's crazy. not a good example. I mean, what's it? How is it better to be a woman? I mean, I guess childbirth. I guess there's some good shit there. Um. You know, gigs, getting booked, write a memoir booked. about being raped. I don't know what's the yeah. good. <laughs> There's no bother thing. It sucks. And then you can't okay, even go okay, on the road. You know what does? You know what is good about it? Very little pressure when it comes to sex. We really get to just phone it in. Yes, that's true. Now, that's why I like to get dominated. Also, so I don't have a penis, which is very lucky. The penis, which is like the. It's not that bad. Women think they're like, how could I have a penis? It's not that bad. It's not that inconvenient. I'm not saying it's inconvenient, but just having this one thing that defines whether or not you're worthy and it's uh, hidden yeah. away. I mean, that's so scary to me. But you have, but like women are objectified with every other part of their body. But you're right, though. It's not like you, you don't just literally say a prayer. Tits aren't, before tits we aren't, yeah. Yeah. Tits aren't like uh, uh, like all or all or nothing. Right. Yeah. 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 A woman takes off her. You, you, first of all, you know. If you have a shitty thing. dick, it's a game dick over. Is a, yeah. a dick is a mystery. It's hidden. You kind of know everything. You know like a woman has, you know, you know she doesn't have to. And it's it. both directions. It's not even like just a length. It's also a girth. We've both talked about this before. Out. Like men don't realize the amount of suspense being involved. Oh my God, it's so crippling. Dick. But at the same time, the women will fuck them that time. They just won't come back for more. Right, right, So right, I right. guess they don't know. But is every woman who never wanted to fuck you a second time, does that just mean your dick was small? Mm-hmm. So is it bad that I've had a, only a lot of one night stands? Mm-hmm. Is that a bad sign? Yeah, it's a bad sign. It's a bad sign. It's oh, not great. God. Um, well, I knew I have a small dick. Well, I don't have a small dick, but you I don't have a small dick. You have a normal dick. But I, I did have sex when I lost my virginity. The girl who was also a virgin said, "This is the perfect size for me." And I'm like, "Well, she's a virgin. Wow. That's not good." Right? I saw a picture of Ron on stick. I have not seen it hit stick. Years ago, different time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was years ago. Let the record state. Also, let the record state. She's asked to see it. Yeah, I don't want to act like I'm like you were flipping through your photos and yeah. I saw it and I was like, let me see, let me see. Yeah, if it's yeah, good. yeah. I'll tell you well, if it's good or you're not. Just saying, like the amount of men who've showed me pictures of their penis to see if it's good or not. And let me tell you, I've never said it's bad. So uh, you could be lying. to I me. could be. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you looked at. It, I remember what you could said. Could you, you imagine said, a world in which I was like, yeah, that's you said this is exactly what I imagined. Sure. And I took that as a positive thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so every time you see a dick, you make a prayer. That's good. God, do you realize that? Every time you're like with a woman, you take out your dick, it's like so much. They're like very nervous. I never thought of that. It's kind of like when you do comedy. People tell you the first time on stage on an open mic, it's not a big deal. But it really is a big deal. Because if you do bad, you won't try comedy again for a yeah. long time. It's kind of like that. Every time you have sex for the first time, it's actually a huge deal. Because you, because it's a mystery, and at least nine women are going to know about your dick the next day. Do you think it'd be better if people knew the size going in? 
You think that'd be helpful? Oh yeah, wore it on your sleeve. Yeah. Except every time you like wear shorts or something, you get criticized. Like, you can see your dick, you know. But maybe it's good if we all saw the outlines. I can tell what a guy's dick is going to look like by his other body parts, but uh-huh. I do think. But what if you're not a whore? Like what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you're shit out of luck, dude. What if you're not a sex crazed yeah. whore? <laughs> then you really, I don't know what to tell you. Then you're fucked. But I know dick is a huge mystery. Women, there's not as much mystery. You know what I mean? I mean, there's some, you know. Yeah. But dick is a, well, also dick is like a deal breaker. I think. Yeah, dick can be a deal breaker. For some women, it's not. For me, it is. Yeah, there's never a pussy where you're like, no. Yeah, no, there are. <laughs> there are? Yeah, you've so- told me about some that are terrifying. But I I make it work. Yikes. I've made it work, you know? Yeah, yeah, but only once. No, you'll get a few times. It's just I've a never had scale. a pussy where I'm like. I won't I, come back. Yeah, no, never. Wow. Yeah, because they're all, you know. They're not that great. They're all kind of. <laughs> yeah, there are. There are. We're going to be friends after this, dicks. And then there's. I'm going to fuck this a few times, dick. And then there's. Please stay with me forever, dicks. Do you feel that the first time you see that dick and fuck you're like. Yeah, dude. Soulmates? Yeah, totally. If it's a good dick, it's mm-hmm. the right dick. Right if dick. If it's good, yeah. Right. Totally. Hmm. So Prozac. <laughs> yeah. Prozac kills your sex drive. It doesn't did, kill did your it sex do drive. Do that for you? It doesn't. I, I don't think anything can kill my sex drive, but it does hurt. It does make it hard to come. I had that issue with. Uh, I bet do a bit about this, but I was on Paxil and I was coming early, and I thought it was a medication, and then the side effect was like preventing ejaculation. <laughs> I was like, oh man, I guess I really yeah. need to be on these pills. Yeah. <laughs> like, how early would I be coming without the pills if I'm coming? It early? doesn't affect <laughs> men at all, but for women, it is tough. You have to really focus. I never. My libido is pretty high. I never lose it. Yeah. Yeah, I always. I don't really lose yeah. it either. Um, how did it come early, guy? For a while. Really? But then I mell it out. I feel like I'm pretty good now. Are you? You know? You're a juicer. Not anymore. Really? You're not yeah, a juicer anymore? No, no, not anymore. Yeah. Wow. I don't juice. Good for you. What, you fucking bring this shit up on the podcast? I don't have borderline. <laughs> when did you stop juicing? Everybody juices. <laughs> they all juice. Do you juice? Yeah. He juices. I don't like how he said that. I don't like how he said it either. He was like, no. <laughs> fucking. Uh, <laughs> I've juiced before and I haven't juiced before, but I've juiced a couple of times. Blue Chew, you know? I fucked I'm a Blue to get a Chew sponsorship. dick. <laughs> Let's get a Blue Chew sponsor. I fucked a Blue Chew dick. I don't, it's not great. It feels nah, like. Nah, because women don't like to. Women, that's, like that's, this. Well, that's the thing you learn is that women don't like to have sex for a long time. I don't think always, you know? Right? I don't know. I don't remember sex. <laughs> it's like I a think weird it's episode. A, yeah, no, I, no, we don't want to do it forever. We want it to be normal. It's like you're, an episode where, like, like you commit suicide and they see this is like the last podcast you did and they watch it. Like, Every oh, this podcast makes sense. I'm on, this sounds makes like sense. I she seemed a little off. <laughs> Dude, I'm at the cellar. I get off stage and I have to be like, I'm not going to kill myself. Just so you guys know. Your energy on this podcast is distracted because you're thinking about how you're going to kill yourself later today. That's the energy. <laughs> totally. I know I'm going to die on this motorcycle and I'm ready for it. That's your suicide. It's because she fucking yeah. rides a fucking motorcycle. Yeah. Awesome. Thank it's you. not awesome. We're concerned for you. I'm ready. I'm the only one concerned. You are the only one concerned. I'm like, you know, you ever see The Godfather? You've seen The Godfather. Yeah. James Conn is really the only one very concerned that Talia Shire gets beaten the shit out of by her husband. You know what I mean? No one else cares. Michael's concerned. No, no one gives a shit. Really? It's just James Conn. It's like, he's like, like his mother, she says shut up to her. And the mother's oh, like, don't interfere. Right. You're right. James Conn's the only one who cares. I'm the only one who cares that you're on a motorcycle. I'm worried about you. Yeah, you are. Well, no, Louis was worried about it because he crashed. Harry, my best friend, is worried about it because he crashed. I like how Louis had to crash to have the worry. <laughs> yeah, people who've crashed, people who have dead people, people have died on it. But I'm, I'm also very adept on it. I'm very good at it. But also, I am ready to die at any moment. Please, please kill me. Please, One, anybody out there, kill me. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. So the Prozac's working. <laughs> yeah, it's working really well. Well, you ever think about upping it? No, because I'm not actually. No, I couldn't up it because I I can't dissociate more. It dissociates. I dissociate you. a lot too. That's why it makes you eat that much. Yeah, because you're just, just a zombie. I feel I hate. We talked about disassociation a lot. It's it's the worst when you're not Ugh, present. It's the worst. Yeah. You're just watching a movie. It happens when you're high all the time. That's why you. Th- that's why the like suicidal bit is there because you're like I don't care about this avatar. I'm like not even in her. You know what I mean? Right. Right. If I'm right. in it, even if I'm in like the a deep form of depression or a deep or a deep form of happiness, then I'm like. But the dissociation makes you just like. Who the fuck cares what? Yeah, it's probably the same with school shooters. Yeah, totally. They're probably just like, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. Yeah. 
you know, it is a crazy thing, this idea that you're not connected to life. That's I why feel comedy little, is the best, because you get the, the best adrenaline when and it present. pulls you down. But then comedy is really sad when you're not present on stage. Yeah, that's the worst. And that's the, I have that a lot where I'm just like, anytime you're watching yourself do a set. Oh, yeah. But that's I could get why, a standing ovation after every joke if I'm watching myself do the set. That's why crowd like, work is great, because it'll pull me back in. Crowd work does do that. It does help you. The reason crowd work is not great. Oh, my God. Here we go. <laughs> I hate this. What? That I hate crowd work? Yeah, you hate crowd work because of the videos. Well, now sometimes I like, I'm in situations where I have to do crowd work and I feel like embarrassed to do it now. I'm like, I know I need to, but like I'm embarrassed because it's just like. You're not a crowd work comic. Don't do it. You well, mean, but sometimes you have to talk to the crowd if they're really bad. You yeah, know? yeah. But like, true. you know, it's like fucking. I just did Houston and it was. I all aboard the hack train, you know? Yeah. Um, I got, I ran into Sam Morell on the plane and he was like, where were you this weekend? And it was Sunday. It was the Sunday. Yeah. And I could not tell. Wow. Him. I was like, I, holy shit. Wait a second. Oh my God. And he was like, what is happening? And I was like, I fuck. And it took me like 35 seconds to be like, Houston. why are you doing so bad? I feel like we're at the end, but like. Doing what, so bad? Or why are the disassociation? Oh, that was just Houston was such a crazy audience. That oh, I hear they're off. I'm no, not awful, but I hear they can be tough. I'm doing it in a couple weeks. It's fun. Get they're hot. They're just trash. Club, they're white I, trashy. I hear some of the shows can be like tough. Yeah. This guy said the N word like three times. In ended the up audience? getting the shit kicked out of him by the bouncers. Yeah, totally. Really? Oh, yeah. Crazy. And word three times? Three times. I mean, once I get, but like three I times. I know, three times. That's crazy. Yeah. So, this, yeah, disassociation on stage is the worst. But then uh, all we want is to be present. That's why when we're like, that show sucked, and people are like, no, you did good. I'm like, yeah, I know I did good, but it doesn't matter because I didn't lose myself in it. Yeah, yeah, All yeah. we really want with comedy is to forget our miserable, self-aware lives for a couple seconds. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whether it's through a bit or the crowd work lesser comics do. It's all about trying to build. I can't make fun of you. You feel like you're like suicidal. I can't. You're I'm just not like, suicidal. You're just like, I know. Do I seem suicidal? It seems like you're about to bleed out of your pussy in like seconds. It That's is, how bad it is. It is coming in days. It's happening in days. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's like when you're not present on stage, it's the worst. It is the worst. Do you? Yeah. Sometimes panicking a little bit before getting on stage can help with that. It can. Sometimes it's over the line where you're like, now I really have to dissociate in order to get through this. Yeah. But sometimes it can pull you in. I've never had, if I'm really nervous before a set, unless it's like really bad, I've never had a bad set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you care too much. I actually only have bad sets where I don't care and I'm cocky. Dude, the ones where you're having a panic attack where you're like, I will die if I step onto this stage, those are the best sets. It's crazy. Yes. So I have, yeah. Well, you know what's crazy about comedy? If you're doing well and you're on a streak, you kind of have to do bad. Yeah, you Just do. to bring yourself down. It Basically, does, the nature of comedy help. is you have to build up your ego, think it's not hard, and that you're funny with that for a while because you don't give a shit, but then you go too far and not give a shit, and you fucking bomb. Yeah. And then you're reminded of how shitty you feel, and then you have to start from scratch again. It's, it's all best. building and destroying your ego in a loop. It does it in a like cosmic in zen way. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Build your ego and then breaks it down. It builds yeah. me up, makes me feel like I'm safe and everything might be okay, and then it crushes me under the weight of reality. Comedy is just a shitty father. <laughs> yeah. We all go for bad dudes. All women go for bad dudes. That's a biological imperative. No, any woman that you meet who's like, no, hey, you can't I be. Can this is what my new therapist helped me realize. We what we do is we project to keep us from dealing with our issues. That's what I do. I'm like, we're all depressed. We're all miserable. My therapist is like, no, we're not. And I'm like, we're all like, I'm he's like, depressed. No, he's, he's like, gotta he's be. like, don't put it onto other people. This is your issue. And he, I'm like, he's right. We, we this is what we do. Let, can I be your therapist for one? Yeah, go ahead. We, we project and we normalize our own behavior to feel like we don't have to work on it. We're like, we're all depressed. Life sucks. We're all insecure. We all can't find love. It's like, no, we got problems. <laughs> and other people, I think problems that need to be worked on. Them. Yeah, I mean, there's general problems that can't be figured out. But in, but specifically, we have problems that we need to work on. And it, it's very much What's a, my problem. It's a I'll, distraction. What do I work on? You tell it's me. a distraction to be like fucking, uh, well, we all feel this way. We'll all have the void. We'll all never feel satisfied. It's a way to get away from uh, from focusing on the issue. You know who's the best therapist? My three-year-old niece. You have to date nicer dudes. There's no way. You have to work at getting turned on. Ew. Yeah. My niece the other day, she was like, why are you sad? And I was like, I just want to be happy like you. And she goes, do you want to do what I do? And I was like, yeah. And she goes, I wake up in the morning and that's it. And I was like, wow. 
<laughs> that is so philosophically sound. That is pretty wise. Reason. It's that crazy. Wise. One time I told my asked my niece if she could name all her uncles and aunts, and she said, they already have names, idiot. Wow, <laughs> yeah, it's the best. The fucking zen. That's so good. That's so good. I Just think maybe, fucking... I think it's work. I think you gotta, you know, like, uh, um, I think you gotta like, I don't know, sometimes I think, I hate to say this, but we've talked about this, I think you have to override your instincts sometimes, because we have bad instincts. So you almost have to go against them sometimes. Let me be let me be your therapist. I can't go against them. How do I go against them? I can't I'm not going to uh, there's no way. You just pretend you're excited about a nice guy with a small dick and just be like, yeah, that's what I'm into. And it's like Judaism. You do the habits over and over again. Eventually, you get used to it. You just pretend you're turned on by that. I would rather die alone than be with somebody <laughs> who actually likes me. That's a nightmare. <laughs> Just somebody who's like, I'm proud of you. I think you're doing great. Yikes. I know it seems gross, but I think deep down we actually do want that. We just don't think we deserve it. But in our head, that's not how we think. In our head, we're like, no, we don't actually want that. We want something better. But it's actually crazy. We actually think we don't deserve the nice guy or the nice gal. When so I we meet somebody nice who person. feels that way, I will have the instinct to push beyond the revulsion, right? Yeah. And I will follow that. Right now, I will continue to date Jafar's. Because we just, yeah, we're attracted to people who are uh, unavailable and we want to pursue the unavailable. Because life is boring. Because we hate ourselves. Yes. And it's a nice predator too. But my girlfriend likes me. And I like her, and it's nice. It's a nice quality to have someone like like you. For you yourself. do seem better than you ever have. I'm doing all right. I mean, you know, I still have anxiety. I panic. know, I know, but yeah, there, you don't seem as you know. We've well, switched. life is shitty no matter what. Yeah, but sometimes it's actually it's, not that shitty. We actually have amazing lives. The fact that we can do I what know. we love to do, it is crazy. I know, it is great, and we just hang out with our buddies. But that's the universe. Once your needs are filled, all you do is think about how empty everything is. Everything is, yeah, totally. But, but a good way to not feel empty is to... Fuck a big dick? Is to get in a relationship with somebody who hates you. That way you always feel like there's something you're working towards. What is more validating than somebody saying, I hate you, and then them being like, actually, you're okay. That's the best feeling in the whole world. Well, yeah, it's, it's a drug. You're, it's a drug. You're addicted to a drug. The extreme feelings of a I drug. I am right now, just so you know, full block, nothing, zero contact. Celibate? With, with the person that I keep going back and forth with, I have put up... I've That's been great. like, it's... Pretty good. And you've told me that 400 billion times, know, but that's I great. Know. That's great. I, I I care about you, and I love you, and I want you to see you. Uh, this is what everyone who gets in a relationship says. They just become a douche. I want to see you happy, Jordan. <laughs> I can't wait for all of we're you to break like up when we're 50. We both, we were both like playing Russian roulette together like a couple months ago, and now I'm just like, I want to see you happy, Jordan. I want to see you in this happy, you know, life. I do really like Kate. Hey, I'm really happy that you're with her. I think it's great. great. Yeah. Um, I'm, I am, Yeah. I'll be open to nicer people. I'll try. You gotta override some of your instincts. I will. I will. I'll try. I'll when try. K when Kate says, she but I like, go too loves far me, in the bad direction. Just to throw her out the window. Really? But you fucking <laughs> <laughs> you turn it into a hug instead. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But you do. I mean, yeah. It's not like we've always been the pursuing the the, the fleeting thing, and, and, and there's, we we find someone not being into us so hot. The problem is, and this has always been the problem with me and you, if I'm into someone and they're not into me, they won't fuck me. So there's no relationship to begin with. Oh, the they'll fuck my, me and my life. Yeah. <laughs> the problem with being a woman, an attractive woman, is if you're into a guy and he's not into you, he'll still fuck you for a very long time, which I used to think was better. No. It's worse. It's not better. It's worse because you're worse. actually like- I'm having the dopamine. You're actually seeing what life would be like. Yeah. And then not get it. It's actually worse to get to heaven if you're forced to leave. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Than to never. So I always thought, you know, I was like, yeah, the women I'm into never want to fuck me. You know what I mean? But the fucking is worse. Yeah. It's way that, worse. Yeah. Because that also, once you fuck a woman, she's just like, it's all emotion. You know? Yeah. They come emotion. You know what I mean? Totally. So, so it's like, so I feel bad for that. That's one of the worst parts about being a woman, knowing that uh, the guy who likes you, who you don't like, will fuck you and probably tell you he loves you <laughs> yeah yes the we, guy will who will likely get to that point yeah. that's not a good place to be yeah yes and he will say i love you so he can keep on fucking he will you. literally <laughs> i find the dudes that are like as soon as i get to the it, they're they're like okay i'm gonna fall in love with jordan and as soon as i get to a place where i'm like hey i think i actually do have feelings for you i the guys i choose are the ones who right at that moment 
end it immediately. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So that I keep perpetuate so that I get like the so that it feels like I can almost win. Like if only I, I didn't let this person out. I know. And then also it's like one of the worst thing about what if you're in love with a guy he's not into you, eventually it like falls apart. Yeah. But you go through your whole life knowing one phone call he'd be eating me out that night. Like one, yeah, totally. <laughs> like, like that's the thing. Cause yeah. like, unless he's in a relationship, he will fuck you that night. Yeah. 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 It's you know crazy. what I mean? Yeah, I get totally. restraining orders. So I'm He'll good. I'm in a better it. position. Yes, totally. <laughs> you don't, you're not having, um, you, when, with a woman, you just, you're not allowed to have those boundaries. Cause guys will just kind of fuck no matter what. So you just kind of like guys will fuck no matter what. And they'll tell you what you want to hear yeah. in order to fuck. You know what I mean? I Exactly. And they'll even think that they believe it in the moment. But I then, know. And meanwhile, women are done sexually. Like I have girls, women back in the day when I was single, we used to have sex. And I've like been like, why can't we have sex again? But they're, they're done. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But a guy is not done. Never done. Unless he's in a Til relationship. Death. And even then he probably is just like, yeah. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it does, you know, but you know, I think eventually, you know, you just got to break free from that. And uh, Jordan, I want you to be happy. I don't think a normal relation, I have never had that. I, don't, I think what I need to do now is uh, plummet out of a five story, but no, no, no. I think what I need to do now is be single for a while. I think that'll be good. Yeah. Though, except this is also part of the cycle. This is part of the cycle? Yeah. Damn, I know. It's been a long day. It's been a year of this. You know, I think at the end of the day, I mean, I hate to see, you know, a boring life is a good life. And no, we're, we're fighting I don't agree with that. that. We're fighting against Me that. and you, we're the devils on the... You think a boring life is... You've switched sides. You're on Joe we're List. You're on Joe List side. Switch sides. Who's on my side? Nobody's on my side anymore? That's why we stopped being on that side. It's lonely. <laughs> it's a bad side. It's, it's a rough side. side. You're like alone. Okay, so you've... Ch you. We've made the decision. That's the... This is what this podcast is about. We've been debating this for so long, me and you. Yes, we've talked about not it. Not even not even me versus you. We've been like, what is better? Is it the I know. unrequited chase or the I boring mean, stability? It's like drugs. It's like, you know, drugs are good at first. Yeah. But you can't think about the first high. You gotta think about the last high. The last high you 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 let your baby die in the other room. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. We should probably wrap up. But okay. um but you know, I hope that I you know, I think you'll break free from this pattern. Was this better than the gay one? Than the gay last podcast about musical? Absolutely. Both made me want to kill myself. Oh, okay, good, 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 good. That's all I hope. You're different for. in different ways. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I think you'll break free and uh, you know, but you know, life is a journey and you'll be back you'll be in a relationship i'll be single and rejected and you'll you'll oh yeah you'll be a you'll be like i just want you to be guy. happy right that's a real yeah. fuck you i just want you to be happy anyone who says i just want you to be happy is basically saying i got my life together for once <laughs> and now i wish you had the same thing how about my family my italian family that as soon as i am I, as soon as i eat and i gain a little weight they go oh no it's a good thing it means you're happy <laughs> and then i want to kill myself immediately jordan where can they find you um i'm on wouldn't it be funny if I got a Twitter now? That's what I was thinking about today. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm on Instagram at Jordan Jensen, LOL stop and TikTok. Um, when does this come out? Uh, we don't have a precise date yet. Well, go to my website, jordanjensencomedy.com. Go to her website. She's a great comedian. I learned so much watching her, even though she used to be I'm going to have the Prozac. I'll have the Prozac. Uh, she's really hilarious. Uh, the real deal. Check her out. Jordan Jensen, everybody. <laughs> Hopefully she'll be alive by the time this podcast is out. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, if you did kill yourself, I'm not telling you to do it, but like it would, it would really be so good so for my good career, for, right? Right now, no, no, not your career. Oh. My, this podcast episode, uh. <laughs> <laughs> fuck your career. No, I'm saying the, uh, we're talking about the living here. This podcast would fucking. If I started my podcast, which is the first episode, someone who had just committed suicide. Oh, oh my! You. Is that the first episode? This one? If you commit suicide. <laughs> All right. We'll talk about it. We'll work. I'll have my people talk to your people. <laughs> we'll figure it out. All right. Thanks so much, Jordan. We love you. Good night.